Hey, welcome back to the channel, folks. Sorry it's been a couple weeks since I got a video out. Obviously, with everything going on in the world today with coronavirus, everything sort of slowed down. And uh, while many businesses are slowing down uh, in my company, uh, it's forced me to work a lot. So not a lot of extra time to do videos. So, and uh, it, as well as that, um, you know, sort of to get some of these parts and things that I want to do for the vehicle um, has, has been a little difficult. So I thought I'd do something different today. It's nothing that I've talked about. But before we get to that, if you enjoy my channel, and I hope that you do split mods, please take a second and hit that subscribe button and hit that uh, notification bell so that you can make sure that you get notified when I have videos. I'm doing my very best to get them out as much as I can. I know that a lot of folks enjoy seeing them, so, uh, so I'll work on trying to have them out uh, as quick as I can. So today, I'm going to do a video on one of the most irritating things about the 550 or the F10 model BMW, and that is the center console. Uh, I'm not sure what BMW was actually thinking with the center console because, um, you know, it's got the cell phone uh, charger slash dock or whatever that's in there, and the center console is already small to begin with. And so by the time they added that in there, it's virtually useless. You can barely fit a pin in there. So today it's coming out uh, and I am going to figure out something different to do with that center console. I'm going to get that dock out of there. I'm going to show you some of the ideas that I have. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right. So got the center console out of the car. Pretty simple. As you saw, there's literally one screw here, one screw here. And then just a couple little clips on the back and everything just pops right out. It takes, takes just a couple minutes. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is, so for those of you that have the F10s, you know that right here sits a little uh, plastic piece where a, um, uh, w where the cell phone sits. And uh, that really just takes up the whole, all the area in here. So I took that out and then this just comes out. And what that does is really opens this up a bit. And, um, and so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to fill this with foam so that I can cut out in the foam some specific things that I want to sit in here. And, um, and for my case, I'm going to, I'm a concealed uh, firearms carrier. And so I'm gonna use my, um, Smith & Wesson Shield 40, and it's just gonna sit in here just like this. And then I'll probably put some extra clips and whatnot that fit right in the foam. So I think it's gonna be pretty cool, pretty neat. I'm a pretty OCD person, so I like things to fit and be where they're gonna be. Um, I'll, I, I may or may not leave this area open. We'll have to see here where the cigarette lighter or the power, uh, power lighter is. And then it's got a little USB. Um, you know, if I need to cover over it, I will, but I think I'm gonna to try to leave it open just in case I ever do wanna to get to that USB. But, um, you know, if you're not a, a gun person, um, uh, can respect that. So this would be a great thing to have your GoPro in or mount your cell phone in or several different things. Um, uh, just because I'm using it for my firearm doesn't mean that you couldn't do this to fit really anything that you've got. So I think it's pretty cool. So. In the bottom of the center console, it has this little rubber piece. I'm actually gonna use that as a template because I need to be able to get sort of the, the curves. And it is tapered a little bit. So what I did is I just started with some construction paper. You could use cardboard, whatever. And I just sat it on there and I traced out maybe about three eighths of an inch around on either side, maybe a little less than three eighths. And then I added an inch to this left side because now that I've removed that cell phone section, I get a little bit more of the area in there. So that's what I did. And, uh, and then I just used a little knife and just cut it out and, and a ruler or whatnot. And um, then this is the foam I'm going to use. And it's not like a styrofoam. It has a little give to it, but it's still very firm, but it's not closed cell foam because um, that's really dense. Um, this is maybe somewhere in between, but 
very easy to cut with a razor knife, very inexpensive. And because it is somewhat dense of a foam, you'll be able to glue it to itself to stack really easy to fill up the area. So all I did was, uh, like I said, trace that out. And then what I noticed is using a, just a regular pen, it, it writes on this foam to where you can see, you may not be able to see it in the video, but it writes no problem. And so I just sort of traced it because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut straight and what's gonna end up happening is um, this will be tapered to fit in the compartment. So, and there'll probably be a piece that ends up having to go on the bottom here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and I'll get back. All right, so got the piece cut out. It's pretty simple. Um, and where I'm wanting it to sit is flush right in here. And I gotta tell you this, it cuts like butter. Like this is the perfect foam to do what I'm trying to do. It really works good. So um, what I did is I've, I've tapered the sides because I, I know it's gonna be tapered. And what's gonna happen now is that it's just gonna fit in just about like that, almost completely flush. And it really fits nice. And so now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna come back on this side and I wanna get it where it's right at the edge here so that I can load it in. And you see how easy that cuts. So I'm gonna cut this because I, when we, when we get to put this back in the vehicle, we want it to sit in the pocket. So just wanna make sure that this is sitting how it needs to sit. I like this. See how it cuts and trims, very, very easy. So now on the inside, now I can put it in from the inside, you see. So now I'm gonna level that in, push it in, and I need about three quarters of an inch of a piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, I'm going to take this piece, and since I know that that's the template I want, and I'm going to cut it out again on one of these. But before I do that, I've got to get it to three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to just cut a square out here, and then I'm going to, oh, excuse me, I'm going to glue. Once I've cut this out. I'll probably do it from the bottom here to get me started. And then I'm gonna glue it and then I'll just continue the taper. So once I glue this on, then I'll be able to come back with my knife and just continue that degree of taper that I've got. And then we're going to cut the bottom piece to three quarters of an inch right across here so that it seats real nice on the bottom. So I'm gonna be able to get real close with that. All right, so I'm using the Loctite high performance middleweight bonding and it'll be fine. And some folks use the 3M. I'm not gonna spray this side. Most of the time you're supposed to spray both, let them tack and stick it, but I don't wanna get all over the side here. So I'm just gonna spray the top here. And uh, I've already mixed the can here and I just, I'm gonna spray pretty liberal on the top. And then what I'll do is I'll come in with this and make sure that we're good. And that'll get it on both sides. And then we'll let that tack up. So now I've got it on that one side and then I'm gonna come back, Oop, a little windy. Come back, hit this one more time. And really let that tack up. And, uh, and then we'll glue them up. All right, so I've let it tack up. And now I'm gonna do is just match it up and then we should be good. I'm just gonna apply some pressure here to really make sure we get some good adhesion. And now we've got our nice little brick. And then what I'll do now is come back with the knife 
and finish carving around to get the taper. All right, so now we uh, have glued the two together. So now I'm going to you know, try to follow the, the angle that we had in there as good as humanly possible. And we'll see, I think it will be pretty close if we do that. So just keeping the, the angle that we had, we'll be close, we'll be real close. There we go, okay. All right, so got the bottom trimmed down three quarters of an inch, feels pretty good. Fits absolutely perfect in there. But now, um, as you can see, when I put it in, it, it fits really nice in there and it's really flush. But now I've got to get it to cover the entire piece here. So uh, we're gonna work through what that looks like. And I know that it's um, about two, maybe two and three eighths of an inch from here to over, and then this is maybe about an inch, a little longer than an inch, maybe. So what I'm gonna do is to get a template started, um, I'm going to uh, place this in here just like it would be but this way, but I'm going to start it two and three eighths over, and I will just trace what I've got here and then I'm gonna trace what I've got here, just as reference, right? And then on this side, we're gonna add, I'm gonna add about an inch and a quarter just to have it. And then we can trim from there. And then what we'll do is, that little nodule there is gonna be a total of maybe two inches. So probably what we'll do here, and it's gonna taper a little bit, but again, we wanna get, we wanna get exactly enough. Uh, and then it's gonna, what I'm gonna do is just leave a little bit of a block here um, and we'll trim it in. And then because uh, this is sitting down, um, what I'm gonna do is start by tracing out about three eighths or so, so that I've got a little extra on the top and then we'll we'll make sure that it fits good, but. Uh... So, finally got a template made. I went through about three versions by the time I got it all done. So just a lot of trimming and um, to get a perfect template. And what essentially, after I put the inch and a half foam back in, it sits down in the lip just a little bit. So I had to make sure that the template that I made would sit down in the lip just a little bit. And it's real close. Um, so I'll use this template uh, because I'll end up having to trim the foam a little bit anyway. So this template's going to work perfect. So I'll transfer this template over to the foam and we'll use as many straight sides as I can in order to be able to mark everything out. All right, so one of the things that I gotta do is I've gotta figure out how do I line up this piece with this piece. And obviously I'm not gonna tape them together, but I just gotta figure out how do I figure out where that sits. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and install this piece that fits really nicely in there. 
And then this isn't quite trimmed all the way around yet. However, I can force it in there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna force it all the way down where I can get it to where I can get it to touch the other foam piece. And it's gonna sit about like that probably. And then I'm gonna take this bottom foam piece and I'm gonna push it out. And what that'll do is that'll show me exactly where it's gotta sit. Okay, so now what I can do is I can come back, I can trace exactly where it's gotta sit. Then I can take the, then I can take the, uh, I can take this off, it's now traced. And now what I'll do is, because I don't want, if I spray on this piece, and then try to attach this piece, um, I'm gonna mess my lines up. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna soak this piece. And then I'll be able to come back in and line it right up where it was, let it dry. I will trim, uh, I'll trim around the sides, not messing with the top. And then I'll have a perfect foam block to start with. And then we can start laying out things like where does, in this case, where does the firearm sit and how does it sit? And, you know, is there gonna be a place for one magazine or two magazines? So uh, it'll be very interesting. So we'll see how that works. For so now what I think I'm going to do is figure out, you know, sort of how does this lay out and how much of this do I want to be exposed um, because remember our plugs are underneath here. So I probably want this back just a little bit, something like that, so that I've got enough room to do one, two, I think is what I'm going to do. And so I think these will be pretty easy to make, um, because we've got the long, uh, we've got the long knife that we can make some really nice, perfect holes with. The one that I'm really most concerned about is how do I, um, you know, and how do I, how do I make this sit in there just absolutely perfect and flawless and really seat in nicely while being able to get it out relatively easy. So I'll work through sort of what that looks like and we'll go from there. I was able to get the magazines in there, just how I wanted it. So I was able to, on those just to essentially just trace out, right? Held it at the angle because they have to go in at an angle. And so I just held it at the angle and then very carefully straight down. Um, you know, when I say straight, I mean straight this way, straight down in. And I was able to go all the way through to the back and now they just drop right in. So now it'll be just getting this little guy to uh, fit in there nice. And I think, I don't think that I'm going to take out this corner yet. I think what I'm gonna do is cut this down, sink this in and see how I like it. And, um, you know, at that point, uh, if it fits good, then um, I think I'll just leave it. I'll probably take this little section back here and make a place for me to get my thumb under to pull firearm up but other than that I think this is gonna be super super clean I think it's gonna be super clean so uh, more to come we'll see what happens all right so I did a, a test pass so <clears throat> obviously got the magazines already cut in and I really want to make sure that I get a, a really nice cut for where the firearm is gonna live or whatever you're cutting out, whether it be a GoPro or a cell phone or whatever else you want in your center console. So uh, what I did on this one is I tried to just draw it out even though I could see the pin on there, but when it came down to actually using the Dremel router attachment, uh, it was very difficult sort of to see it. So what I did on this one is I ended up just taping it off just like this. And so um, after I drew the lines on there, then I placed um, the firearm back on and then 
did my tape and I'll sort of round these out when I get there. And what I found is if you just go slow, it works real well. And this wasn't quite deep enough. So, and I did this sort of in a hurry just to make sure that the theory worked. So I will, um, I'll go a little slower on this. And then what I did is I sort of measured up uh, on the firearm to make sure that uh, I wasn't going too deep because I don't want it too deep. So I'll set this to the side and I'm just gonna sort of get in here and you'll see me go real slow. Um, this may be a little loud, so. But just go slow and you'll be good. All right, so there you have it. I uh, have completed the insert, and as you can see, firearm fits nicely, two magazines fit nicely. So, you know, again, I'm a real big fan of things not, um, you know, not rattling around the car, and I really like to have a home and a place for everything um, in the vehicle. So I think that this will help keep everything really nice. And then now, of course, the moment of truth, which is, does it fit? And I believe it'll fit just fine. And there you go. So there's my center console. I'm going to go put it back in the car and then we'll wrap it up. But as you can see, I can pull these out. Nothing moves. I've got my release here so I can pull the firearm out without any problem. And it goes right back in and there you have it. So Really happy with the way this turned out. Um, you know, I think that uh, this is a real easy DIY. It's just a little time consuming and just making sure that you take it slow. So if you wanna do something like this, or maybe if you're a YouTuber and you want a safe place to keep uh, things uh, in your center console, I think this is a great, a great option for you. And um, so let's go see what it looks like in the car. All right, so finally got it done here. Um, it looks pretty good. And all you do is just pop it. Boom. There it is. And again, it doesn't have to be a firearm. It could be a cell phone. You could have multiple things in uh, the console. But I think what I like is that I'm able to really use the entire console now. Uh, as, as before, I could barely get an ink pen in it, um, because it had that big tray where the, uh, you know, where the cell phone uh, adapter was that I don't use. So I just unplugged that and took it out. And uh, when I sell the car, uh, one day I'll, I probably won't even put it back in. I'll leave it in if the buyer wants to put it back in. But I think being able to have the usable space is really cool. Um, so there you go. Uh, and I didn't do a, um, I didn't do how to get all this apart. There's plenty of videos out there for that. But uh, just a real brief overview is you pull up this little piece here and there is a um there's a, a bolt underneath it and then you pull this up there's one bolt here um and then the back air conditioning unit just literally just pulls straight back and um and that's it then this whole piece lifts out in your hand of course you have some electrical wires and whatnot that are hooked up to it but um no big deal there uh so put it all back together and there you go Custom Center Console.